Welcome back folks, my name is Lars Nomil and today we're gonna be talking about Cyberpunk 2077. Now do keep in mind, when it comes to the first topic which I'm going to talk about, there is going to be spoilers from Cyberpunk Edge Runners and Cyberpunk 2077 because for the first topic, I do want to talk about the differences when it comes to cyberpsychosis of B versus David Martinez because this has been a heavy discussion ever since Edge Runners came out. So, if you don't want any spoilers, I do recommend skipping this part of the video where I talk about, you know, cyberpsychosis in general. Now, to go into the first bit of information. Before we go into talking about differences between V and David, I do want to read what Mike Pondsmith actually wrote about cyberpsychosis and those differences, and because he is the creator of Cyberpunk 2020 and Cyberpunk Red along with his team at Artosorian Games, I will of course listen to him because every single bit of info I get for my lore videos comes from his source books and what he writes about in general. Okay, so time to partially explain cyberpsychosis. First of all, cyberpsychosis is a disorder that in part depends on subjects overall internal susceptibility. Just like every person who drinks a lot at parties doesn't end up an alcoholic in the gutter, not everyone who gets loaded up on cyberware is automatically going to go cyberpsycho. You have to have an inherent susceptibility, which in tabletop RPG is present as players' humanity stats, which is something I heavily explained in my cyberpsychosis video. Humanity is an index which in tabletop RPG uses to determine if you're going to go full cyberpsycho or not. If your index goes down, you go cyberpsycho, you give your character to the GM and for you the game is over. Humanity is not just a measure of one aspect of personality, but an overall measure of several elements, including the subject's ability to emphasize and relate with others, their ability to absorb and rebound from mental and physical stressors, their ability to show compassion and flexibility to others, and when they're able to balance their worldview through other methods. This actually happens today with people, especially in the world that we live in. You're going to have people who are more susceptible to looking at the world that we live in today, and what they see takes a huge mental toll on their health on their mental and physical health, because if you take a toll on your mental health, your physical is going to also take a toll. And of course, you have people who are going to see the world outside and imagine that world, that being Cyberpunk 2077, the dystopian that it basically is, and you look at it and you're like, okay, it's not big of a deal. Obviously, your brain is a lot more resilient than getting cyberpsychosis than someone else. So in some ways, I tend to treat cyberware as an addiction-heavy anabolic steroid use being my favorite model. Not everyone who juices ends up crazy mad with roid rage, but those who are more susceptible to the need to take more steroids are more likely to hit a point where they do a flip into roid rage. Now then he goes to talk about David and V. David's starting humanity was probably already pretty high, and before things went to crap, he had a loving mother, a career pet, and no more hassle than the average poor boy in a wealthy Ivy League school, so he had lots of buffer. But even so, he still, after losing all that, was able to make friends, build a replacement family, and after some prompting, even get a girlfriend, and a mentor main to create a supportive father figure, so he could definitely handle the stress of added cyberware up to that point. Most people in Night City don't have the level of humanity to pull off this kind of stunt without going full cyber psychotic. So David is one in a million, and that's why Arasaka wants him. And this basically explains you. Higher the humanity index, meaning that cyberpsychosis is going to take more time to take a toll on your body and your mental health in general. And when you have someone like David, who lost everything, his family, his mother, and basically his career and his future, and now he became an edge runner. He still maintained that positivity, but you can maintain that posi uh, positivity for a long period of time. But if things start happening to you, the bad ones, like for example, which happened with Main, with Dario, because I really do think that the episode 6, where everything happens with Main and Dario, I think that's that point where David breaks. You had something stable, and then it happens, and it's gone. Now then, Mike Pondsmith talks more about Fee. V is a different case. 
We don't know V's background, uh, but even if V was full on Corpo, they were able to hold it together even when they ended up with a dead rocker boy in their heads. In fact, having Johnny in their head probably helped V, because Silverhand's rage and attitude probably acted as a buffer for the psychological hits V is taking. It's like having a time share with a guy who's already half cyber psycho and doesn't mind if V slaps stuff on their shared body. He's already crazy and violent. And that's the thing with Johnny Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand is one of those people who is not going to break easily. Like, if he sees something happening in the world, something that he thinks is not moral, or something which doesn't align with his worldview, he's going to set it on fire and he's going to blow it up. That's the thing when it comes to generally with mental health. You have people who explode and you have people who implode. If you explode and that's because of your mental health, you're going to do something, well, you're going to regret. But if you implode... That's worse, because then you're completely fried, and that's where cyberpsychosis comes into question. And for the end he said, so that's a rough explanation of the roots of cyberpsychosis. If I ever get banned with, I'm going to start writing, posting some stuff about what I had in mind as I put together the Night City universe. But for now, you'll have to go with what I've got here. Have fun, and remember not to chip Millie spec cyberware like your mother warned you about. <laughs> Man, I love Mike Pondsmith, he's such a great guy, but um, yeah, generally, when we're talking about V or David, V even before 2077 the game started, if you just go from his life path, V kinda had even more experience than David then. Because, as you saw, like, David started off with his mother, he's still a kid, like, David is, what, 19 years old, meanwhile V is <laughs> somewhat older. So, V already went through the childhood, depending on the life path you had, he already went through some stuff that's like Corpo V was already working for Arasaka, you were already someone at a relatively high position in Arasaka in general. So when you have all of that experience, and on top of that you get Johnny Silverhand, of course V is going to be more resilient, but at the end of the day you have something called, well, plot armor and game design, which um, CD Projekt Red didn't want to go into like full, you know, cyber psychosis mechanics and whatever, which I kind of think should have been added, but I think that that would be complicated to kind of polish and just balance in general, but I think it would be great. But even then, like, V just has more experience and V has the chip. Meanwhile, you have David, who had everything, and then that was taken away from him. He gets a different family, he finally gets an alternative way of living with his edge runner buddies, Chooms, and then they get taken away from him. David simply did not have enough humanity then to handle cyber psychosis. And with everything happening, when Adam Smasher came into the picture, that was basically the end. Next up, we're gonna be talking about CD Projekt Red developers getting emotional when it comes to the recent resurgence of Cyberpunk 2077, because I don't know if you've seen the 20 years of CDPR video that um, they have released a couple of days ago, where they talk about everything which was happening throughout development of multiple games, not just Cyberpunk 2077. But when they specifically touched on Cyberpunk 2077 release, oh boy, you could have seen the sadness in developers' eyes when they talk about release, and some of them even said, like, for them it was the worst month of their entire lives, because when you spend so much time working on something, and when things just start falling apart, and when the game comes out, and you see the reception which was happening, it just crushed everything. So, after two years of patching, of updating, of them getting back, you know, on their feet as developers, it is honestly very nice to see this recent resurgence of the popularity of the game, and obviously that those developers are now looking at this with pride, and they're saying, well, finally, our game is reaching the potential that we wanted it to reach, and... I'm really happy that this is happening because on Sunday, uh, Pave Sasko does streams on Twitch. If you haven't followed him already, I definitely recommend you do. But he went further and he talked about, you know, everything which was happening. And he got really emotional when he talked about they really needed that. Like, it took them two years of just constant pain and constantly updating the game, hearing everything that um, you had, all of the comments coming to your replies and everything, you had to go through all of that, and then when you finally make it, when you finally see the light at the end of the tunnel, it's amazing. Time to celebrate, and uh, because the grind was actually 
all worth it, you know? The grind was all worth it. All that work, all that time, all that hustle, all the time, you know, closing those, those patches, delivering those incremental changes for you. I'm so good that people are, uh, I'm so glad that people are playing the, playing the game. You can't imagine how well, it, how good it feels. So actually looking at Pave Sasko like this and a bunch of other developers who are simply just now amazed at everything which is happening with the game and that everyone is enjoying it, it's really nice to see and um, hopefully this pushes them further to, to just kind of look at the game, look at the universe and look what they can probably implement in the future as well. Obviously that comes down to the management if they decide to do it that way as a developer. There is only so much you can do when it comes to what your company is going to be deciding on especially depending on which position you're actually uh, you have in the company so seeing them so emotional right now and looking at just basically what pave has been saying about uh, just constantly working hard to bring the game to what it is today and just constantly trying to succeed and finally when it happened um they they needed that and i'm glad that they did you know uh, you're Developer as a developer, you know, he's working on something for a very long time and um, he's trying to make the best game No one sets out to make a bad game. Absolutely not. So right now I do believe they're on the right path and I'm glad that you know developers are getting some W's because um, This is going to push them to work harder and when you are have this situation right now where everyone is playing cyberpunk Where things are going well, you're automatically going to have a lot more motivation to work You're going to have a lot more motivation to create something which is amazing and that's why This is good. This is good for the game and this is definitely good for CDPR And now the future is going to tell us how the management has fixed uh, the issues and what's gonna be happening so far I don't know they're doing fine, honestly, like they're doing much better and with the recent resurgence, obviously in Cyberpunk 2077, I do wonder if in patch 1.7, when it eventually comes out, they might going to add some new things because I do believe that some of the outfits from anime, like Lucy's outfit, should definitely be in the game itself, but that's just me. And look, this is everything I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like and subscribe button for more. And tell me down below what you think about all of the topics I talked about today. And also check us out on Twitter and Discord if you want to continue the discussion there. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. If you want to support the channel in an extra way, I do have a Patreon page. This is LKM signing out. Stay classy, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go